are more than 6,000 other songs as well are being honored with a new exhibit at the Country Music Hall of Fame. 10 News anchor Beth Haynes is in Nashville where she spoke to the son of Boudelow and Felice Bryant about the special exhibit honoring his parents. It's been about a year in the making, and finally, the life's work of Boudelow and Felice Bryant is on display at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. And one of their sons, Del Bryant, former CEO of BMI Broadcast Music, Inc., just toured the exhibit for the first time. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm very excited to be here and see what they've done. And I will say that they have a book that accompanies this that is really in more depth and it's just incredible but no I'm very excited to see all of this memorabilia in one those place books those ledgers I mean that I keep being drawn to that corner because they were always right there on the coffee table or, or under the table and uh, it was hard to detach from those I mean we kept them in a vault for for years and years and years but letting somebody take them and put them up is just was sort of scary I'll say that how involved were you and your brother in deciding what pieces would be on display? Well, I guess we were pretty involved. Uh, we didn't know which songs they would want to focus on, and the books, you know, you can only open a book to one page. It might have Wake Up Little Susie and Love Hurts and a bunch of songs in that book, but they've got one, one shot there. I had suggested that possibly they could, but it would have been too much trouble, had some sort of page turner where you could leaf through it, but then there are thousands of songs in there that have never been cut, and you'd have to avoid those. I don't want anybody to come by and say, oh, that's a great idea. I think I'll write that down. <laughs> well, so, handwritten lyrics. We're also looking at a guitar your father used to write Rocky Top. That's true. He, he would uh, travel some with that one when they were in Gatl Gatlinburg. That was an easy, small guitar to use. And uh, he had several Baby Martins, and uh, that was the one, though. That's a 61 model. And you can see... There's several versions of Rocky Top, and uh, there's one in the book over there, but there's one here, and I, and I think it's, it's somewhere. That may be it, but you can tell it's the first one because it's so rudimentary. You know, and it's the one that they had the fight about when Dad just said, how about this? You can, I just know the way they were, and I could tell by how different it is than by the time he got it in the book that it was the first. But it's pretty exciting. Very exciting. Who would have thought that Rocky Top would have become somewhat of an anthem for the University of Tennessee sporting me. events. Nobody in our family would have thought that. They were amazed, yeah. excited, and, and amazed. They, it was always more important to write the next song because the next hit was down the road always, and you never knew where it was. So you had to, they, they believed that you couldn't get married to songs. You can't get married to one you wrote. You have to move to the next one. And uh, that one later on certainly married them, <laughs> to say the least. A wonderful exhibit going on right now in Nashville at the Country Music Hall of Fame.